our starting map as previously mentioned in the bottom right spawning in as our blue zerg player best of seven grand final this is raynor taking on the red terran top left from team liquid clem well, this, in the best of seven especially, could be a real fun series. A lot of possible different strategies. A lot of different ways you can open. You know, you really get to see all the maps if it starts to go the distance as well. You know what? Today's games have always been so good. I feel like we'd be kind of greedy to ask for seven games. But can you imagine, like... Oh, this could be a great final, guys. Could be absolutely awesome as we see the racks dropping down from Clem. And Raynor will just open Hatchery first. Let us know in the chat who you're cheering on. If you're going for Clem, if you're going for Raynor, who you believe is going to take this series down. These two youngsters have just proven themselves to be really the ones to beat in the European scene as of late. Raynor looking amazing in the Big Gabe weeklies and starting to do very well over there. Clem consistently performing in a lot of tournaments as well. Maybe not quite as crazy as uh, some of the other players have been in the Big Gabe weekly. I mean, here has been really good in those as well. But in the events I've been running, Clem and Raynor just seem to meet each other consistently. You just can't get rid of these guys. Need I remind you that Clem is in the semi-finals of the Wardy TV Spring Championship preseason right now because he beat TY. Raynor sits in the quarterfinals. We'll play parting. That happens on Saturday, by the way, if you're looking for more epic StarCraft 2. Saturday Spring Championship preseason playoffs is going to be the place to be crazy i mean these guys have just been playing so well lately really excited to see what comes out of this really excited i mean you guys in the chat just have predictions all over the place 4-3 rain or 4-2 clem see a 4-1 no one predicting 4-0 of course not because it's going to be a sick series that's why as we do have our cc building up on the low ground and of course for the moment here yeah, pretty pretty slow regular startup nothing too out of the ordinary as a few zerglings coming in and the Reaper is actually making its way out and across down to the bottom right-hand side of the map. So, we're going to be seeing Clem coming across and will be making his way towards this natural expansion. Obviously, potential to move up in towards the main base as well. And we'll start a dance with these Zerglings. There's a lot to gain from fighting with uh, these Zerglings with this first Reaper. Obviously, the if you can get a kill or two, it can really weaken up the defense when you try and get the Creep Tumor down. If you can get the Creep Tumor kill as the Reaper, that's obviously fantastic. 25 energy early game wasted and really slows down some of the Zerg's progress in the front. These Zerglings come forward. As you can see Rhino will not drop it right away. And he even drops it quite far back. It's a very safe placement. And he uses those Zerglings perfectly to zone the Reaper away from it. And so the Creep Tumor will come down. Very safe positioning, though, because he knew Clem wanted to dive in for it. So he made it that much tougher to do. That still slows, you know, that for Clem, that's still somewhat of a win, right? Because this is still going to be a slower setup than if the creep was just already over here. So definitely not uh, so bad for Raynor as the third hatchery, uh, for Clem, sorry, as the third hatchery drops down from Raynor. And here on Simulacrum, we do have ourselves a very standard setup. As Clem goes into the starport, what is interesting is he's kept building Marines and he's built two of them. And that oftentimes means Medivac, Armory, and a Hellbat attack to open this series, perhaps. Which could get really crazy. Ooh, is it going to be a fusion core? Okay. That's another way to do this. So, there's obviously a setup where you're not rushing into Stim in general or Tech Lab here. Um, so, it takes away some of the, the, the setup that you need. The Marines obviously help to defend against Overlord Scouts. And the Viking will come out to help with that too. There's two Hellions and a Reaper making its way across the map to try and deal just a little bit more damage here. Grenade going down. Popping those Queens back. The third hatchery is... Well... Getting another queen up and running, the drone. Mining away at the moment as we do see those other couple queens continue to come forward. Drone will go down. And again, the fusion core is going to be finishing up in the main base from Clem. So getting that completed as the starport comes over. Drops down into the tech lab. Viking will continue to fight against this overlord. Dealing a lot of damage here at the moment. That is going to go down. So obviously really looking to deny the scout. And really looking to keep uh, this in the dark at the moment. See the Viking out in the center. And again, the few Hellions coming around. Cycling is back away to the bottom side. Again, the rest of these links from Reynolds setting up in the couple of uh, campaigns on the way too. Just Reynolds being very cautious if this was Hellbats or anything. Helps out, of course, but 
I mean, in general, right, you're just a little bit blind, especially with the Viking denying a lot of Overlord Scout. And as you come in here as well, and there's going to be a wall off, so still kind of tough to see. I mean, you see the third CC, though, so that's good information. But no idea about this battle cruiser. And for the moment, it would seem that Reynold, because he has no idea, his battle cruiser, and typically that leads to mech, he has no reason to be dropping down a road run or anything. Because, you know, again, he has no idea it's a battle cruiser in the first place. Now, this faster left from Reynold will typically give him the uh, bailing speed, which, again, against Bio is fantastic. You get a fast bailing speed. You generally play from behind a little bit in terms of upgrades, in terms of 1-1 one, one melee upgrades, etc. But against mech... Not so much of an issue as we see these Hellions. Oh, that's nice. I even scanning up here to see those Banes and where they're going. And here comes the BC just teleporting in. And Reynold has zero preparation for this. Now, he does have seven Queens. And he is going to start pulling them uh, through to the front here. A lot of Lings going down. I mean, this is the issue when you don't have the Roach Roaring. The Hellions are able to really join in the fight against these uh, Queens a little bit. And now, obviously, they can pull away to a Mineral Line. And this third base is in a lot of trouble. The BC has to back away. But boy, those Hellions, eight drones going down and doesn't even lose that many Hellions. Of course, the BC staying alive as well. And that will find some extra damage also here as this Overlord out towards the center gets taken down. Clem back around into the middle. Queens coming through. Going to tag up this BC. A lot of damage being done already. Spire is on the way in the main base. Getting that started up as well. The Hellions and the Reaper down the bottom side. A Creep Tumor already picked off and going to find himself another Creep Tumor here. Going to see the rest of the Zerglings from Raynor back into the center. Maybe even launching a counterattack right now. But this is Mech. And as the Spire comes in, get the Corruptors to deal with BCs. You're going to need more than just the Lings and the Banes on the ground, typically. Although, for the moment, their run by is looking to be able to get some damage done. I mean, BC shows up, and apparently Lings are just going to back away. And Clem's going to come around the right-hand side. And he's going to find himself a few of these Zerglings to be killed off as well. So, Zerglings continue to come down. Chased away to the bottom side. Infernal Pre-Igniter setting up from Clem in the main base. And obviously, it's just all of the upgrades you need to really power up this Hellion Cyclone Force. Bane speed will stop. So we will see a commitment here from Raynor to Baneling speed. He's going to go for that. He's going to say, yes, I'm just going to go Ling Bane for a while. I mean, Ling Bane can work against Hellion Cyclone. Typically, you go Ling Bane Hydra. And of course, at some point here, Raynor can still put down that tech structure. He's got a lot of money. Initially, he's got the Spire up as well, though, so he might just go Lingbing. I guess Lingbing. you got to get the Corruptors first. Um, I say Lingbing Hydra a little bit because actually we saw some non-BC mech the other day, which is a bit funky. But yeah, against BCs, obviously, you do need the Corruptors. He's not building them at all right now, so Raynor not helping himself out, quite frankly. As, again, he has the gas for it. He just doesn't have the lava. That's what he's missing because he's using all his lava on Lings and Banes to try and shut down the Hellions, but I mean, you can just see these Hellions in the Cyclone doing a great job, and of course... In the end, they're kind of getting cleaned out, right? But yeah, now we're actually going to see Mutalus. So even going to be a different start than what I suggested. Mutalus is going to be on the way as a new, another BC comes up. Well, Mutalus definitely can clean out these BCs. The question is, can they clean out two of them? I feel like that's already going to be very tough, especially because it's not the craziest Mutalus count you've ever seen either. The Cyclone goes down. And this hatchery does not fall just yet. But now all the Queens are going down as well. Double BC putting in the work. Last few Hellions over here as the Cyclones continue to clean out. And the Mutas are going to be showing themselves right now. Now, remember, one of these BCs does not have a teleport. This one, which is low HP, does. And we'll get out of there. The other one does not, however. So, still a problem as the fourth base did die. And that has to be a rebuild as well. As Battle Cruiser continues to push this Mutalus the way over to the right. The other Mutalus coming up as well. Wing continue to deal some good damage. And the BC will fall. So, Battle Cruiser goes down. Is now command center Clem lifts, relocates to the fourth base and so Clem continues to expand and continues to take a lot of advantages here in this game number one this mech catching Reno off guard the Viking was a beautiful play to keep it very well hidden and from here on out it's just going to be an uphill battle from Reno he's got Mutalus to try and bring into play and I mean there's seven Cyclones and that number's rising with three BCs as well these Mutalists are going to have a really really tough time if they want to try and get rid of you know, a lot of those Cyclones and BCs, etc., right? You've got to be really... You're in trouble. Like, it's going to be really tough, quite frankly. It's going to be very difficult. As the Mutalists make their way down to the south side of the map, they're going to peel their way across over the left. Cyclones. Getting a couple of lock-ons already. Those Mutas taking some damage, and... Well, the Mutas going to re-engage in. He actually loses a Muta, but he does kill two Cyclones. Not bad. Obviously, the fights that are going to work out well for Raynor are going to be the ones where you can just grab a couple of Cyclones here and there. Those Yamados do find two Mutalists, though, so they will fall. 
I mean, this is going to be the issue. If you can take a fight on the Zerg side of the map and then Reynor is forced into a fight where he has to fight into the, you know, the Cyclone lock-ons, etc. And Clem has so much room to kite away. There's obviously no good, you know, not going to be any splitting up of this Clem army at that point either. So again, it's very tough for the Mutas to take a fight where they can overwhelm and just win out very quickly and very easily too. All of those middles from Raynal out around the top side. Coming in towards the main reactor is going to get picked away at. It's going to fall in a moment or so. So reactor oh, actually left alive, but I guess there's nothing here to repair it. So it will burn. We'll see if it can be saved. Just going to be seeing the Cyclones actually find a lock on, uh, shutting down a couple of reinforcing Mutalisks. Thor's now on the way, and this is something which... It's funny, we actually casted Sue T.Y. the other day, and uh, Sue played, like, Mass Meter against Mech, and T.Y., it didn't really, like... For, for a while, I was like, well, you know, Cyclones against low Mutal counts work. But later in the game, T.Y. never built Thor's, and it was like, well, dude, he's now got 25, 30 Mutalisks. At what stage are you going to realize, like, Cyclones are just not as effective as Thor production? And, well, the answer was he never realized. Clem does realize that, and he gets the Thors on the way, and again, it just makes the army of Clem so much more inengageable. Like, you just can't engage that as Raynor. You just can't fight if there's going to be Thors here as well. These meters will go dive and buy, and right now, no defense at home. The Cyclones have to pull back. On the top side, the BCs are still hunting for the next, uh point of destruction they can do so much here three bcs are going to be very difficult to shut down if they show up this queen gonna drop drones being picked away at a lot of drones gonna be picked away at and yeah i mean this is the issue as well if they're using the mutalist aggressively it's kind of funny because when you're playing against you know when you use corruptors against bcs the corruptors are never in this scenario where they're like oh we're gonna go attack across the map because if they're attacking across the map it's because they've already cleaned the bcs up but what's happening here is because reno wants to use these mutalists aggressively it's obviously hurting a little bit, and that's going to be a teleport out. It's a responsible call from Clem. But it's so tempting just to finish off this base. But you can get that another time. You've already got, done good damage. Do that another time and worry about that a little bit later. 20 SCVs went down and Bailin run by us, so I missed is watching those BCs fight the base. Did you see the Cyclones pulling back a little bit? The Lings and Bane's coming in. Nice little flank on the left-hand side from Raynor as the Mirrors are going to fly in on top of the Thors. And Raynor's going to get a full cleanup here. The surround was beautiful. And Raynor just destroys Clem's army out of nowhere. Blown up by Banelings. Well then. Suddenly this game changes up a little bit, huh? Those Thors were not able to fight those Mutas off. Not after they took so much damage already. Is coming up to the top side. Clem will expand out to the fifth base. Ling Bane going to make its way along the left-hand side. And a run by already can set up in towards this uh, bottom side fourth. You get another round of 20 SCVs. I mean, Clem rebuilt from the first 20 SCV losses, no problem, but that keeps happening. It becomes way more of an issue, of course. Hellions on the way down here. Planetary is going to get a lot of these bailings before they make it in, so actually not that much damage taken. Seven SCVs down, but so many Zergners, right? It's a massive cost from Raynor. I feel like your resources lost this game. 4,000 difference. It's actually not as bad as you might think it would be, but a lot of that is because of that previous fight. I'm actually kind of interested what the resources what uh, resources loss was like before then. Because look at that drop off of Clem. And that army was expensive. It was Thors. It was Cyclones. That's an army that is expensive to replace. So, yeah. Definitely a big fight for Reno And probably even keeps him in the game. Now, he will lose this base here. But the nice thing for Reno is, of course, I mentioned obviously Clem can get this later. It's still going to have an impact. Of course, the earlier you kill it, the better. But the thing is, it's still way better to kind of kill this now and have Black Raynor got another base up to kind of replace it with. Then lose your BCs and kill it earlier, right? The BCs are still got so much potential in this game. They still are a unit that can force the Middlers to turn around and come back home and completely relocate on the map and pull them away from harassment damage that can be so very frustrating. Right now, a couple of Widowmines growing up here. If Raynor didn't see those, those could be deadly. Yeah, he sees the... What am I trying to get lock on? And they do get one shot. One shot, one opportunity. Unfortunately, it's not enough. Obviously, the mutas will survive one uh, Widow Mine connection. But the mobility of these mutal discs is coming an issue right now. Did you see the other BCs able to kind of cut them off from escape from the top? However, is the units here to defend this Ling Bane attack? Widow Mine helps out a little bit. The two siege tanks have their work cut out for them. You'll just have to lift up this base. And so many SCVs going down. 31 workers killed off here already. There's now more Banes and Lings rolling their way up into this topside base. Orbital Command lifts off. The Hellions morph into Hellbats. Widow Mines and Thor Shots are killing the Mutalists on the top side. Only 10 Mutalists remain. So while Clem loses 40 SCVs, Raynor loses so much of his Mutalist count. 
That is so painful. I mean, for Clem, yes, painful, but actually five bases landing back down. Quadruple orbital, not just triple quad. About to be five. He's going to have a lot of meals, so I'm not sure if losing those workers is... Obviously, it's bad, right? Losing 40 SCVs. I'm not sure it's something which he doesn't recover from. I think he's actually okay there. Now these meters has been so much lower in count. These BCs are able to fight them a bit more easily. We'll just fight, teleport this BC army over towards the Thors. And Clem's got a push coming across the map. Coming down the bottom right side. Oh, I mean, this is just basically Ling Bane at the moment. The tank support will go a long way to helping out few of these banes. It's honestly, I'm not even sure if there's enough banelings here. There's nine banes on the map and only four more morphing. This base goes down. It's going to be a counterattack from Raynor heading across. Clem sees it. He'll lose a Thor, but obviously knowing that the Lings are moving around to potentially counter means he has some preparation time now. A lot of drones going down as well as we see the Zerglings running their way up in towards this orbital. No protection there. No protection here either. Again, just orbital commands. At the same time, Clem is still pushing bases. Widow Minor 2 does get some Zerglings and now Helenes are on their way over to help. Only two SCVs lost as 25 drones have gone. And that number, well, might just continue to rise because these drones are not anywhere near where they're going to want to be. Middle Scan has rebuilt. Rain or able to bring 20 of them or so onto the map here and may just go for the counterattack. I mean, what you meant to do, you can't use the Middle in this army. Thors are just going to, you know, destroy them. They're just going to make sure they were, you know, basically like they were never even made again. It's, uh, it will not be pretty. So these mirrors are going to try and fight the lower numbers of units. Try and force Clem back home a bit. Get some SCV kills once more. Again, these SCV kills are coming at a time where Reynolds lost, you know, workers as well. And actually, Reynolds just missing out on bases. This base here, 36 over 16 when this harassment started. That alone is kind of a sign of how oversaturated Reynolds is because he's missed out on now the bottom side bases. So even though Reynolds had a worker lead, it wasn't actually that impactful. It wasn't actually mining that much more. And well, now he, doesn't even have a, now he doesn't even have a worker lead as Clem comes through the top side of the map for a second time, pushing across and looking this time to maybe kill Rain or the drones are already evacuating. But what are you going to do if you're not mining? You're just giving up your fourth base. You're on three bases that are mostly mined out 18 minutes into the game. Ah, Middles are going to go darting across the map again as Thor's tanks, Hellions, all the good stuff here. Gathering in the upper right side, a Widow Mine attack already going to come through. A couple of Widow Mine shots. I mean, again, these meters are annoying. I'm somewhat surprised Clem pulls home. I guess Reno is barely mining, so better to keep your own bases up. But again, I mean, he could have killed this base very easily, right? There's nothing really here from Reno. Maybe, I mean, maybe Clem just having a little bit of trouble figuring that out exactly and, you know, really filling out his position in the game. In the end, it doesn't really matter. The BCs are killing so much and... Maybe it just doesn't matter if he pushes or pulls back at all, right? I mean, either way, he's got this game in the bag, and Clem wins a thriller of a game number one from Reynor not knowing it was Mech to Reynor getting a huge fight to bring him back. In the end, Clem's able to push through and take the first map of this best of seven. This tournament happened because you guys were incredible uh, last weekend when we did a Raid Shadow Legends sponsorship, and we absolutely smashed and destroyed every single goal set out ahead of us. Uh, with 24 hours or more to spare. So it's a big thank you. I ran a couple of events already. And this tournament really is the big thank you to say. Thanks so much for making that such a success. There's actually been some really cool things that happened. Because it was such a success. I'll talk to you guys about that another time. Um, and that's why this tournament exists. As to the top left hand side. Our red Terran player is Clem up 1-0. In the bottom. Uh, I say bottom right. In the right. Our red. No he's not red. He's, he's blue. Our blue Zerg is Raynor. So many things in my mind. Can't even do colors anymore. Directions. As we do get ourselves setting up on the hatchery. And the natural. Selling out is super underrated. It is, man. You know, I could go on a spiel right now where if you have a Twitch Prime. And you hit that button. You could subscribe. And we probably get a bunch of Twitch Prime subs. But you know what? Let's just enjoy the grand finals. Slash, I kind of did it. I'll tell you, I could do it. Shh, it's a marketing technique you never even realized. Rack is coming into the front then, so we will see an expansion down on the low ground in the next few moments. Hatch, gas, and pool. The setup for the moment, nothing too crazy just yet from Reno on a map that we could absolutely see something a little bit uh, wacky on. Obviously... A possibility here that we see something like a Roach Rush still, of course. Uh, we'll see how the game develops. 
Which, stim, uh, which skin set is Clem using? I'm putting the players on the newest war chest skin sets, which is not really new anymore, but I believe it's called the Tyrador Terror, if I'm not mistaken. Tyrador, Tyrador? Something like that. Peaceful early game. That's Clem. Doesn't even SCV scout to try and force a third base elsewhere or anything along those lines. I feel like he just doesn't want his opponent. <laughs> I feel like he almost just doesn't want Raynor to have to make a decision of like, oh. You want me to, you want me to like you know be aggressive and mine more gas like he's like no 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 let's just let this game go into a macro because that's gonna be a lot of fun as we do see the few lings coming around the reaper being chased and again that zergling speed from rain or setting up into the main base as well so a bit of damage being done here and there as we do see a couple drones of rain all popping out and they're gonna go mining away over on that natural expansion six links here to defend is actually kind of interesting as well typically you go for four you don't need six so it is one extra drone you're missing out on and it's not like Draenor's really getting much done with these six lings or the two extra lings over a drone right so yeah as we do have ourselves a uh link speed upgrade coming through again the reaper having a good time drone or ling really is nice in these early stages really is a nice little bit of micro as the starboard sets up in the main base I mean, to build six lings and then still to lose a drone as well, right? It's even more of like a, it's even more of like a kick in the face. It's like, nah, buddy, what you mad? What are you doing? There's a few lings coming forward. The queen, good shots. Oh, Reaper grenade saves him. A couple extra hellions coming across the map. Medivac building as well, so really does have the opportunity to just lift up and go into the main base. It's actually a pretty fun map for like hellion dropping and elevator and on because. A, it's very hard for Reynold to see all the different directions in which that medevac could come from. And B, the Hellions can sort of just be like, yeah, yeah, we're sitting here. Don't you worry about us. And you can pull away, lift up, and go straight in the main, right? Like, it's it's a it's a move that you don't necessarily see coming in many ways as Reynold is. Maybe you wonder why the Reaper is here, not the Hellions now. We'll see if he moves anything into position. He's moving a few links into the main. I mean, you've got to be prepared for something like this, a possibility. Yeah, especially if the, I, I think seeing the uh, Reaper kind of being left on its own is something of a tell as well. As you see, Queen and Ling's in position and it's a perfect defense for the moment. Clem just going to go straight into Stim and Bio, uh, Stim and Liberator, by the way, as well. So just Liberator, Stim Pack, Bio build. One of the very standard builds we're seeing Terran players use when they do want to use play Bio nowadays. And it just gives you that little bit of extra harassment into the extra barracks. All of, you know, it... Bio is very well figured out in TVZ in the sense of how you get to it, right? And what you need to do. And the Liberator acts as that little bit of extra harassment. You get the racks down. You get the rim onto reactors. You get the engineering base to follow up. And that's just what Clem will be following for the next little while. Here's a Reaper in the bottom right. It's cleaned out. The Hellions, well, they probably don't want to dive too far in. There is Zerglings over there and he knows about it. He's just trying to threaten and bring Queens maybe down here a little bit. So you can have a better time with the Liberator. But there's already a Spore Crawler in the back of the main base and is already starting to deal some damage that liberator taking some shots here queen's able to pick off one hellion and you know, this liberator gets two drones but that's about all so not really a lot being done as we do see the hellions down the bottom side the queen is pretty quick to push the hellions back away and a couple of extra barracks coming in from clem as well as the reactor production continues clem looks like he'll just play straight in towards widow mines with this bio style I never even got any siege tanks or anything up to really help him out defensively at all here. That factory for a little while now has just been building a reactor initially for the racks and now a reactor for itself. So not much uh, factory production at all is going to be seen. The medevac loads up eight marines and they are going to start coming across to the right hand side of the map. The rest of these hellions from Clem going to well start by coming in and doing some damage to this hatchery. The marines are going to actually unload on the watchtower here. They do have stims so... They can definitely be a little bit scary. It cleans that out. Look at this Overlord ring that Raynor now has. Full vision of anything that may head up towards the main. These Hellions continue to run around. And they are, in the end, going to get picked off. It's only a matter of time. But it is distracting the Lings. As now Clem makes his play into the main. And a couple of drones already in some trouble. Already going down. Five, six workers killed. Marines will load back into this medevac. And they are going to come back up through the upper right-hand side. And Clem will build, pull a couple of more Hellions back as well. Over to the left. More Widow Mines from Clem coming in. 1-1 one, one upgrades and Combat Shield upgrade coming through as well. Again, 1-1 one, one melee upgrades from Raynor also coming up right now with the Baneling Speed on that Bane Nest also. 
Another refinery off to the side and a new factory too. Clem is not the player to play like eight racks never stop. He'll mix it in maybe at some point of this best of seven, but he does love to play the extra factory. He does love, just love to keep on dropping and play this multitask heavy style, pull the Zerg apart, try and deal a lot of damage. And the great thing is that he's just good enough to do that, right? Like he is good enough to make that work, which honestly it's, it's kind of hard to say about a lot of Terran players in the world right now anyway you know, never mind just in Europe but in the world Clem really is very good at this style that he likes to play as a Widow Mine already setting up and actually doesn't get taken down next couple of Widow Mines trying to target the Banes good split away by Raynor in the end and this first drop will have a little bit of a trade that actually should be able to target down these couple of Banes this is no Bane speed still as well focus was on the upgrades hence being even on the upgrades with the Terran player Pushing forwards here. Clem really now starting to progress against some of this creep spread. Starting to just slow Reynolds' presence on the map down a little bit. More Marines down the bottom. Going to be stimming on forwards. And a few Banes already have to pull back themselves. Marines come in. Couple drones going down. The rest of the Zerglings coming across. And, well, meanwhile, the other army from Clem out into the middle of the map. Marines and Widow Mines straight through to the center here. A couple of those Widow Mines will start a burrow. And one of them gets uh, through the rest of the Marines just kind of comes to kite away. Clem's just everywhere. He's in the main, he's in the center, he's in the bottom side once more. These drops just do not stop. And behind it all, fourth TC, a drilling close upgrade. Just going to be seeing the rest of this army able to get on load and do very well. There's a couple of Hydras show up though. An attack choice of Reno this time around to play that Ling Bane Hydra style. Very nearly gets a couple of these medevacs. And that actually, you know, with Hydras on the map means it's going to be kind of tough to keep dropping with those specifically. Obviously, might want to just get home and heal up a little bit, get those repairs going. Rest of the Marines in these medevacs pulling back to the top side here once again. Lings and Banes still gathering up over on the Watchtower. That infestation pit dropping down into the main base too, so Raynor not going to hang around and just lair tech forever. And it is typically something you see when you play in towards uh, Hydras because unlike the Mutalisks, the Mutalisks really keep the Terran player pinned back, etc. They harass a lot. The Hydras are much stronger just standing army. I can sit here and I can fight, etc. Right? So in that sort of regard, the Hydras actually allow you to go into Hive that little bit faster than usual. Now we'll see what he does with Hive. Clem has started some Siege Tank production and that may just be... You know, repercussions of having seen the Hydralists. He prefers to play a Siege Tank style against Hydras compared to playing Widow Mines if he was expecting just pure Ling Bane or if he was expecting Mutalists. Now, if he goes into the Siege Tanks at that stage, you know, at some stage here, you're probably going to, you know, as the Zerg players, you hit into Hive, get some Vipers out. It looks as though the plan is just to go in towards a Great Aspire and just play in towards some pretty quick Broodlords. So that will seemingly be the plan. The thing is with Hydras as well is you don't necessarily need to go into Ultralist when you hit Hive Tech because when you hit, basically you get to that point where as Ultras come out, okay, hold that thought because a fight might happen. Clem's in a concave and Raynor will not fight that off creep. But basically, usually when you're playing Ling Bay Muta, Ultras come out and then they're really that solidifying unit of your army, right? Suddenly your army's that much stronger. Against Hydra or with Hydras, you don't really need that to happen as that's a Widow Mind drop for eight drones. With Hydras, you don't need the Ultras as much because the Hydras kind of are already that buffier part of the army that help you out. So he can just go straight to Broodlords here, and that seems to be the plan. He's pressing forwards. We're going to see these Lings and, uh, Lings and Hydras all pressing forwards. The Bio kiting backwards here right now again as he pull off of Creep. It should go very well for you. The one Siege Tank gets taken down. Raynor backs away again. I think he really just wants to play around the Creep spread here, but he doesn't want to get Clem into too good of a position. Medivac's will just load up and that's also something where the vipers could be so great as well i've ducked a few of those full medivacs back into a fight or so could obviously do a lot as well we'll see exactly what reno wants to spend the money on hive is now done so immediately we'll just prioritize the great aspire that was expected time is building starboard so he's already preparing himself for whatever he might have to deal with i mean either way whatever the hive tech is going to be if it's ultras starports are good to build liberators if it's brood lords starports are good to build vikings and typically across the board, at some point you want to start adding in ghosts because they are pretty good no matter what. As this army of Clem tries to push in once again, Ling Bane, Hydra, Queens as well. All spreading out a lot of Zerglings running around down this south side. Just going to see these other few Hydras wanting to try and press forwards as well. See what else they can do, Zerglings. Continue to run into this. A bin or two coming through as well. Widowmine shots doing okay to play clean up at the moment. 
And again, those few medevacs of Clem out back over the left-hand side. As you do see, 3-3 three, three upgrades, adrenal glands. A couple of spine crawlers dropping into play from Reino as well. Fusion core. Even from Clem. I mean, super late. I mean, advanced ballistics probably just the priority. Because actually, Liberators are pretty good against uh, Hydras too with uh, Liberator range. So not a bad unit to have in general. But also could maybe super crazily way further down the line build some uh, BCs, but... For the moment, yeah, a couple of Liberators starting up. I mean, Vipers are going to be the initial choice here, so you will actually go into those. I mean, he has the Greater Spire now, but there is no Corruptors on the maps. There's no Broodlords on the way just yet as Clem. And loading a few units into towards the main base, again, something Reno has to go and deal with. As at the same time, a couple of these tanks going to be on Siege and Clem, wanting to press forwards as we do see this Queen going down pretty quick. The Ling's coming straight in towards this main. Bunch of Marines going to get cleaned up. And again, the rest of this bio army from Clem just continuing forwards onto the creep spread as well. Hydras, Queens, Banes. All of this ready to push forwards if necessary. And we're all splitting up the army. There's a couple of Queens still trying to come through. We're going to see the rest of the Marines across the left-hand side. A lot of Ling Bane on the upper side of this as well as we do see just the drones continuing to drop. I mean, nine workers, 13 workers already down. So a lot of drones going down here. As here we go. Ling Bane, Hydra, Viper. Starting to press forwards at the moment. We're going to be seeing the entire army coming across here. 15 workers down. Meanwhile, drop on this bottom side. Not really being paid much attention to. Clem will see it in time to lift up. And we'll get away. Big push in from Clem then. 15 workers is obviously a big win for him as well. Bio comes up the ramp and we're going to be seeing a queen taken down from that as well. A couple extra creep tumors being picked off. And these Vikings already firing to take down one of the Vipers now. Now Reynolds going to come and strike back. A blinding cloud of two dropping down. The Bane's rolling forwards. All of these Zerglings coming across. I mean, all of these tanks are going to go down. Hydras will continue to chase the Vikings away to the upper left. And it's just going to be seeing that Reynolds is able to hold on. He's got money in the bank to spend again. The issue is on this map, the Terran has so many bases. And he, so Clem has a lot of money too. He's not running out anytime soon. So these consistent back and forth fights, they can just continue. The thing is, the longer it continues for the Zerg, generally the worse it is. But Reynolds has been trading well enough that I'm not sure if it's too much of an issue just yet. Obviously, these Vipers are pretty new additions into all of these fights. And with advanced ballistics now on the way, Clem really will prepare for maybe some more Liberators to join. Especially as long as this is Ling Bane Hydra. I, there was just like a little bit of Midas, uh, Viper support or so. I really think the, uh, I really think the Liberators are a great choice. Because again, they give you such good coverage against the Hydras. And again, eventually it might become this sort of scenario where that forces Corruptors, which leads to Broodlords. But, you know, then it's time you've already got the starports up to kind of deal with a switch like that. A couple of Ghosts getting some snipes off on these Hydras as well. Ghosts are not typically something you need in super high numbers at this stage of the game. But having a couple, if you keep them alive and you get a snipe here and a snipe there, it slowly picks away at that Zerg army, right? And, you know, you snipe down a Hydra every year so often. Obviously goes a long way to helping out as these Zerglings are going to run in up this left-hand side. Planetary Fortress... It's going to be in some trouble. It's going to get blown up. The Planetary Fortress goes down already. A Widow Mine or two coming in as well. Zergen's taking a lot of damage. Another huge Widow Mine. Oh, wow. Well, Clam just needs to pull these bare SCVs away now. Minimize the losses. He's done enough to actually save the Planetary. Center of the map. Reynold comes pressing forwards at the same time. But I don't think it's a fight he wants to commit through to. So he has to back away once more. And now he's just going to try and get some more Banes up. But he's actually struggling. He is running out of lava with money in the bank to spend. And Clem is looking like he's winning this, not necessarily war of attrition, but the war of keeping up on everything. And especially because Reno, again, without lava, that's just, a, you need to inject more sort of thing. And he has the bases, but obviously queens are all over the place. Oh, a few marines trying to come down this bottom side. Clem has slowly pushed the creep further and further back as well. So every time he's fighting now, he's getting that little bit close to the Zerg base. Nice blind cloud on that forward siege tank. Liberator is not really set up in position at all right now. And he's going to get a few ghost kills as well. So it's a good fight forward from Raynor. Catching Clem a bit unexpectedly. Uh, you know, Clem's just like, well, I, I wasn't really thinking you were going to fight right then. Not at all. Raynor watching that island base as well, by the way. There's one of those maps where the islands can obviously come into play. And, you know, have a real impact on the game. you got to be careful about that. There's a few more Marines on this bottom side. Medivac going to load up. Bring it down the bottom. Four more Lurkers. Uh, for more Lurkers, well, Lurker Den on the way. So Lurker Den coming through. More Lurkers will be on the way up soon, but more from zero. As I'm getting a little bit tumbled over my words. A couple of CCs building up as well. Clem really establishing an economy. And CCs to replace command centers that get busted down by runbys as well. I mean, 
It's something we see every day from Zerg players. There's, you know, there's a base you can kill. Woohoo, let's get it. But obviously, the Terrans are building more and more command centers to deal with that. And that's especially what you want to do at this later stage. Make sure you can replace those bases, that income, as soon as possible. All of this army from Clem still pushing through the center. A few extra liberators sieging up. And again, pressing forward. A couple of Balins already going down. These queens going to get picked off. Hydra's being cleaned out as well. A couple extra creep tumors. Now, this is a lot of damage done right now. See what these Vipers can do. Abducts on Liberators, perhaps, but there's so many of them to abduct to pull out a position. Can the Lingbane Hydra just swarm through on the ground? Going to be really tough. SCV's going down across the map somewhere in the meanwhile, but the Hydras will just not be in the numbers to do this. And finally, 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 Reno says, okay, time to build Corruptors to really fight back these Liberators. This might work right now because there's not that much anti-air in this army. There's like four Marines. You might just be able to send the Corruptors straight into this. He's going to go. I mean, this hatchery is very low. He's going to lose high ground hatchery as well if he doesn't go soon. If he liberates, he's going to unseage and relocate forwards. Uh, eight lurkers on the way as well. Thing is, against ranged liberators, the lurkers obviously are going to get pushed back too. You know, they're zoning units, but the liberators are, in this sense, I think better zoning units than the lurkers are. At least the lurkers will stop the ground army pressing forwards. I mean, Reynolds playing into a very strange stage of this game. The lurkers switch this late against this many libs already. Not something you see every day, so... It really is a tough one to kind of wrap your head around. Lurkers will unburrow lings and banes are running forwards. The Corruptors in the sky seeing what they can do. Does Reno have enough to somehow win out on the ground and then he can just let the Corruptors do their thing? And he has Lurkers here that are burrowed up and they definitely help. But now they get scanned and now they will go down. And Reno, 19 minutes in, is running out of supply. The mass unseed on the Liberators to go fight the Corruptors. And Clem will take a 2-0 lead in this best of seven. Is it? We start on the bottom left hand side. Our red Terran player here on Everdream. This is Reynolds map pick. And Clem is in the bottom left, sending his second SCV now across the map as the first one already making its way over. Time to switch this up a little bit as in the main base in top right. Our blue Zerg is Raynor. Game three. Of this best of seven. Two wrecks to start. Now, Reno does send his Overlord initially out through the top side and then back down and around. Second Overlord's going down the right and will turn probably into this, but pretty late on. So this is not going to be scouted very early as we do see this Overlord coming down the right. Gas from Clam is pretty quick as well. Is this a Reaper play? I think it may very well be, and that's why the second Rax is so late here. So, it's not your standard two Rax Marine, which actually, uh... <laughs> it's gonna be getting going... <laughs> Did we just have another Moderator Slay? <laughs> like, nobody is safe from Moderators lately. <laughs> nobody is safe from Moderators. <laughs> oh my god. Well, Rax about to finish. Reno does see this in the end, and by the timing of the Rax, he should be able to know that this is probably not Marines. So he kind of knows what's up. He's gonna pull drones. Oh my God! Does he? Maybe he thinks it's Marines. This is not the response you should be having against Reapers, right? Reno, he's gonna see a Reaper, and he's gonna be like, "Surely, no! Like this is not what you need at all." Gonna be seeing the uh, few drones coming back over. Just gonna be seeing the Reaper continue to fight, and yeah, Reynolds got no idea about it. Now he's gonna lose a second drone. Now he's probably gonna lose a third as well. Ah, uh, oh, oh, this is already a really bad start. So much lost mining time from pulling those drones forward. It's gonna see those couple of Reapers continue to pull backlings, continue to fight. Ah, uh, this is this is really bad. Reynolds. Got a scout that might have just heard him more than if he just responded to this on the fly and, you know, seen this when he saw the first Reaper or so. Just gonna be seeing a Creep Tumor, uh, sorry, a Reaper Grenade going down. Queens are gonna try and start fighting this, but again, it's already such a deficit you're fighting from. You've got no Ling Speed on the way or anything. And the Reaper Count's just gonna be keeping on growing, right? I mean, you're fighting this with slow Zerglings and Queens. This is really, really rough right now, and Clam may be taking this to a 3 0 lead. And then Raynor really has an uphill battle to fight. And we've seen the Reapers continue to come in. And I mean, one queen goes down. 
The Zerglings just don't have speed. Like, you know, there's nothing you're waiting for here. Usually you're waiting for link speed and it becomes more bearable, right? But in this game, it's just a GG. And Clem will take game three of this best of seven. And now... Map number four. Bottom left-hand side. Up three to zero. It is Clem. And the top right, our red Zerg from Clash. It's Raynor. Please extend the series, Raynor, says Void in the chat. I don't want to do things today. Brutal, guys. I know. <laughs> what is life? If this ends now, it's only a five-hour stream. Does Wardy even have passion for StarCraft 2 anymore? Does, like, does Wardy even care about StarCraft? Or does he just show up and, like, cast a couple games and leave? You know, tell me... Tell me when Wardy's back to cast in 12 hours a day. That's when I'll be a fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good thing Wardy made Raynor best of seven because it'd be over by now. You say that, but obviously we wouldn't have played Purity and in Industry for map number two. And, you know, Raynor does not like that map at all. So, you know, you could argue that maybe, you know, the map order would be different. There would have been a veto from Raynor that wouldn't have been, that would have been Purity and... He would have played a map that he, you know, he would have played a different map. So it might not have been 3 and 0 right now. As we have got ourselves this overlord coming down the right side. Extractor and a spawning pool. So hatch gas pool to start up at the moment. It's going to be seeing the orbital command in the main. Reaper coming in. I'm just going to be seeing our uh, SCV. Pushing across, obviously looking like a more regular game once again. A bit more of a throwback. Back to games number one and two. Do we have the map order? I believe map five is Zen, map six is Nightshade, and map seven is Golden Wall if we get there. Of course, we need Raynor to step up a little bit for that if that will be the case. The CV coming over. Drone to the natural. We're gonna have a couple of queens, a few zerglings coming now. Gonna see that command center on the net as well. Factory into the main base here from Clem. Eternal Empire. I mean, you can play all sorts of styles on Eternal Empire too. You can play Ling Bane purely and just go straight to Hive. You can play Ling Bane Muta. Ling Bane Hydra. Also one that works actually. There's some more open spaces to push into Terran fourth bases. So you can even get, you know, quite good aggression with the Ling Bane Hydra on this kind of map. Y your options really are fairly fairly endless in a way when it comes to uh kind of styles of this map like it's large it works counter attacks are cool i mean anything that's like a bit more aggressive and like rushier like roach attacks and so on and roach builds maybe not so much but when it comes down to like ling bane base compositions then that's kind of fine now climb engineering bay blocks the third base and he actually yeah <laughs> this is not meant to finish this is meant to obviously um be left on high hp and then cancel at the last moment so, this is obviously going to be a delay on that third hatchery. And that generally is going to force Reno into a little bit more gas mining. He's going to hit saturation a little bit sooner. Because he's usually going to have a third hatch. Which he can start saturating, but he won't have that as early. So, that generally means a bit more gas mining. And a lot of the time, that means that Zergs then play this kind of faster Mutalisk opening. We'll go overload speed as well. Yeah, the faster Mutalisk opening, obviously then you kind of delay upgrades a little bit. And you get those Mutas on the map and look to try and make that work out as this reaper coming over to the right hand side a few zerglings coming through and they're gonna get themselves that reaper kill so reaper will go down that's a nice pick off as a couple of hellions continuing their way up to this high ground couple queens there as well that's the cloak coming in for the banshee overlord speed coming through too like I mentioned before the overlord speed will give you a good scout and so on helps reno just see a little bit of what will happen here and in the meanwhile We've got the, uh, you know, we've got the uh, the cloak set ready. Right? That's going to be seen. So sometimes even, you know, you see this cloak get scoured. Terrans will still commit to it because obviously it's, uh, you know, Banshees in the hands of Terrans. They can do magical things. But, uh, you know, every now and then some people just kind of cancel. I think because the first Banshee is so close to finishing, he's just going to keep it going. And he's just going to go the two Banshees. The thing is the two Banshees are just, you know, they're so good throughout the game. There's no reason you need to do damage right away. And a lot of the time, the Cloak Banshee show up and there's already spores in position, etc. too. It, it really is a micro unit. It really does reward control and, you know, correct usage of that unit. So, 
you can get away with this being scattered. It's not the end of the world here for Clem. There's definitely been uh, worse things to have scouted, as we do have the lair from Reynold. We'll finish up in a moment or two, and again, when that finishes, we get a little look to see what is going on. But of course, no Evo Chambers yet. It does start to feel already, as though we're probably going to see that Spire coming down and a build them towards that Ling Bay Muta composition. A couple of engineering bays from Clem in the back of the main base. Two more racks dropping down as well. And we do see the Banshee from Clem will make its way out onto the map too. As there's our first Banshee actually showing up just before the spore is done. He has three drones to start this off. Now Lair is done, so there will be Overseers. So there's mobile detection. And that's really nice too, because obviously a lot of the time what these Banshees are able to do is sit between bases and deal damage that way. So it's another benefit of having the faster Lair and then you can go into the Overseer. And there is the aforementioned Spire dropping down from Raynor. So this will turn into a Ling Bane Muda style. In the next little while, Clem brings out a group of Hellions over to the right-hand side of this. And, well, again, Spire just coming up for the moment. Seven more drones in production. Going to see these couple Queens continue to push those Hellions away. And again, a few Overlords continuing up as well right now. So a few extra Overlords coming into play. All of those drones coming up. And again, Marines out the front. A couple of extra barracks on the natural. And there is our orbital. We're going to lift up, move across to a third base here. With the two Banshees now coming back into the uh, back of the third base. They're going to come straight through, and already this Queen already goes down. Now the two Banshees going to go up into the main base as well, and they can go in after a few more drones. Another Queen to be picked away at. Hellions from Clem back off. Again, really good defense from Reno. Like a drone here or there, but nothing too major. And Bane Nest coming up as well. Obviously, Bane Speed something you get pretty quickly here too. He's still got no Evo Chambers, and I do worry about the, the speed at which he's going to eventually get upgrades. He's going to be very far behind Clem on the upgrades. Usually you see, like, maybe, like, you know, like, a minute or so, but this is already a minute and a half difference. Clem will be slowed down slightly on 2-2 because his armor is a bit delayed, but... I mean, Evo Chambers haven't even started yet. Sorry, they have started yet. They've not even started building upgrades yet. So they are on the back foot. Yeah, obviously right now you're putting your gas in towards middle. There's a couple of Banelings. That's a nice catch on the Hellions at least. So you will be able to clean these out. So those Hellions go down. Marines dropping into the fourth base location. The Lynx coming through. A couple of Marines going down. Again, middle is starting to come out. A couple of Queens pressing forwards. Just going to be seeing the army of this getting pushed away. So again, Clem will just be turned away for the moment. Here come the Banshees back in. Obviously they've just been left for a while. Now if the meters here you can actually start getting damage on these medivacs it forces the drop off. Here the meters taking some damage. Nothing lost but obviously brought low. Now they'll come up and, and these banshees may as well just kind of suicide in for an extra drone or two because the middle is on the way and that banshee is not going to survive much longer. There we go. We'll see the meters moving towards it in the end. That's the bio force with a few widow mines coming down the south side. And again, drilling claws coming up. 2-2 upgrades on the way on the engineering base. Here comes the rest of our Mutalists out around this right side as well. As a command center for the fourth base from Clem will also build up. 1-1 one -one upgrades coming in from Raynor. Bane speed. Mutalists. All the good stuff is... See a bunch of this coming out around the bottom. The Mutalists obviously in this sort of number want to start harassing. And I just can't... I can't just get over how slow these upgrades are for Raynor though. Like... 1-1 one, is going to be finishing when 2-2 two, two is finishing for the Zerg. Like, uh, for the Terran, that, that, that's so wild. That's so insane. Mm, Marines come in and they snipe down one Moodless already. A Widow Mine down to the bottom. Just going to be seeing a group of Moodless that can't really do much just yet. Now Thor's on the way out as well. Lam is getting that fourth base ready as he goes drilling claws. This game, obviously, with the Muta's up, I imagine you'll stick to the Widow Mines rather than switching a bit more towards the Siege Tanks like we saw him doing a little bit of in the uh, Purity and Industry game. All Lings and Banes moving around. A fifth hatchery from Raynor up in the 12 o'clock position as well. Taking this watchtower. Lings and Banes all the way out over the left-hand side. CC from Clem will come forwards. We'll go down to that low ground. A lot of Muta Lisks from Raynor. Out down on the south, a few of those changelings dropping down too. Just going to be seeing all of this Ling Bane army from Raynor. All setting up, all getting ready to go now. Going to be another command center here from Clem, just going to be dropping into place. Going to start morphing that down into towards a planetary fortress.
Again, plus one vehicle plating going to be finishing shortly as we do see the Mutalist of Rain Horse still coming out over this left-hand side. The Lingbane army up on the top. A few extra Banes morphing in. 2-2 two, two melee upgrades from Raynor. Just going to be setting up on those evolution chambers. Again, so those start now. Then we're just coming through in a missile turret. Already going down. The refinery getting picked away at as well. And a couple of these SCVs. Maybe in some danger. I mean, Clem's just going to start really pushing across the map. He does need a scan here to clean out some of this creep. Raynor coming in from the top side, but only the top side. Sets off one Widow Mine, but there's a lot more to be done there. At the same time, obviously, these meters are having a good time. 15 workers down. So obviously it comes down to make sure, you know, making sure you're able to defend this. A so Widow Mine actually just unburrowed a few Widow Mines unburrowing. Right, these Banes are kind of on their own, so it somewhat makes sense, but... Well, Clem. It's not really got enough here to keep on fighting, and that's one Widow Mine shot. A couple Widow Mine shots to do a good the job, but... Now the Thor goes down as well. And Clem gets pushed back. Raynor maxed out. And looks like Raynor might finally be getting a game here where he's got an actual real advantage going on compared to Clem just kind of dominating for the entirety of the game because that's what happened in game one. Clem was very far ahead. And yeah, Raynor pulled it back a bit, but Clem stabilized. And game number two, Clem just never let up the pressure. And there's definitely moments again where Raynor had chances, but... I feel like this is the first time in the entire series we're seeing Clem truly in some trouble, right? Where Clem is actually like at a point where it's like, well, this was not good for him. And what's he going to do about it? Because the Zerg's on five bases. There's creep all over the map. We're just going to fly down the bottom side. Some Lings and Bane's going to run themselves up this ramp as well. Bane's continue to come on through. One of mine goes off on an Overseer as the rest of these Bane's going to run their way in towards the Mineral Line. They're going to go after a bunch of those SCVs. The Marines coming back into this. Uh, nice cleanup and nice run around from Clem to minimize losses. Up jumps into this. Good target fire on that Widow Mine. So now the Banes want to try and get into this planetary forest, but not too successful. They're mostly going to end up getting SCVs. Wow, there was a few more on the top side in the end there that actually helped get the kill. Didn't think there was enough for that initially, but obviously in the end, there absolutely was. There's now Clem coming out through the center and... We'll push across once more. Reynolds' army supply is down from committing so many units to that fight, but... 40 Banelings morphing in. You guys think that covers it? I, I kind of think it does. Mutalus will go back down the bottom side again, so they're looking to harass that a little bit more. Reno has the drone count here to make this work out. As the Banes getting ready to run in, the Mutas will be turned around. Maybe they just want to come up. If you can clean out this army, the Mutas might be able to intercept the Medivacs on their way home. That or actually, well, you can't still see CC. The Mutas are still making work done. Now, uh, getting work done. We're going to see an Overseer actually tanks a uh, Widow Mine shot, which is a nice little usage. Make sure it doesn't go off on as much of the Ling Bane. Bane's continuing to run on through Widow Mine. Not connecting on all too much. The rest of the meter is still setting up. And, well, Reynolds still playing, bringing so much of this out into the scent. A couple extra Widow Mines continue to be picked away at. And Reynolds Middleist will now fly into the natural. So, straight in here, picks off a missile turret. Already a bunch of SCVs are dropping down. A lot of SCVs are dropping down right now. 11, 12 workers. Bio Army of Clem is going to be picking away at this upper left hatchery. The rest of these mutalists just going to come around. I mean, this is the sort of drop you clean up with these mutas now as Marine Count's not in good enough numbers. So you do take down a hatchery, but it comes at the cost of the units that you are using. Well, Clem, four bases for victory right now, basically. You see these lings running in. Thor already having to lift up. The rest of this bio coming across as well. Hmm. I'm also just going to be back out into the middle then. And we do see the few Mutalisks. They want to make their way in towards this natural expansion. Missile turret cancels up right away. Going to jump in on that missile turret. So it will go down. So now we've seen the rest of the Lingbane out and around the map. Ran over a few Lings back on the right side as well. Hive is coming through. On that main base. So that's going to be done soon. Again, these middle is coming into play. And picking up a couple of these uh, supply depots. So doing a decent job of this. Putting on some good pressure still. These middle have just not let Clem breathe at all. And after that little bit of a blip in game three. Where, you know, the, the game was pretty quick. The proxy racks worked very well. We're back to these epic kind of back and forth games. Like, between Clem and Raynor. Where, I guess this one maybe not so much back and forth. But... Definitely Clem kind of holding on as Raynor puts on all sorts of pressure to try and work him down. Bane's coming in and just not really finding an opportunity that he likes there. 
Honestly, these lings didn't do as much as I thought. I guess they're picking off reinforcements as well, though. The meters come in to help as well. Still, the Banes out on the right side could maybe make a play for this low ground base. And these meters are actually picking off so many of the reinforcements. Like, there's just Marines being trickled around, and every single moment, these meters are just there to get some of the kills. Falling Bane pressing forwards. I mean, at the very least, you're killing off this planetary, but you're also connecting in on SCVs. You're connecting in on the bio units that were nearby. And it's another great fight from Rain. Over 17 workers dropped down from Clem, and you just can't keep replacing that again and again. Twittermine picks up 13 kills as Zerglings try to back away. I mean, yeah, Clem just has to rebuild CCs from the start, and it just you just can't keep up with that. You just can't keep that going. The income graph here is a very Rain or favorite graph. Like, Clem is not solidifying enough to keep mining. Now, he is trading that bit better, but for the income to be this much so in Rainor's favor, the, uh, you know, the efficiency of Clem is not high enough. Like, he'd be okay. Like, if he was on five bases for right now as Clem, I think he's all right, but the fact he can't keep five bases means that Raynor is just going to whittle him down. And well, honestly, right now, Clem's not even maxing out as Ling's now run by into this third base as well. There is a drop of uh, Clem over in towards the natural expansion. Takes down the Spire, so it takes away some of the Spire production. A few more SCVs continue to drop here as, I mean, long-distance mining happens. Those Lurglings have a fun time. Clem pulls the army back. But again, these are all things which just stop Clem from getting maxed out once more, right? I mean, yeah, these lings might go down, but Raynor can rebuild and replace those very easily. And now Raynor is going to start building Ultralists. And oh, the Burrow Banes on the ramp as well to get even more of these Marines. He can actually turn around with the lings. For a moment, looked as though he was going to try and take that fight. Uh, it's just brutal, right? I mean, I'm going to position my especially as Ultras come out now. I, I guess just, I didn't really talk much about it because Reno has been dominating, but the 3-3 wasn't even done. Ultras are about to be out. Like, they are an amazing unit. Usually, like, the Ultras are the point which kind of, you know, the Terran breaks down a little bit. It's going to be seeing the rest of this setting up in the center of the map. The chitinous plate and still moving through the adrenal glands is not far from finishing up either as we have Ling, Bane, and Mutalisk making its way across this bottom side, this fifth uh, command center. Immediately in some trouble as the Zergon's going to come running on through. Bane's going to come crash. I mean, so many of the SCVs are stacked up on this base because there's nowhere else for them to go. There's Lings in the main. There's Lings in the natural. There's just rain all over the map. There's Banelings burrowed. He doesn't use those ones just yet, but he's been using those a few times in this series. Oh, and in the semifinals too. That's a nice widow mine, but again, do you save the base? You do not. The Ultras... Do a lot there as well. The meters are like, chase me, chase me, and you'll die to banelings. There's no anti-air. And that is how Raynor closes out game four to finally get on the scoreboard. It's just less Terran favored than uh, Nightshade. So yeah, a lot, of, a lot of map discussion between the two of them having some fun as we get this up and running. Bottom left-hand side, our blue Terran player from Team Liquid is Clem. And the top right-hand side, our red Zerg is... Raynor. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. Five and a half thousand people. What is up? Thank you so much. Don't forget to hit that follow button. I cast StarCraft 2 every single day. Just hitting that follow button is the best way to see if I'm live. And obviously, we just have more of you. If you're enjoying what you're seeing now, we do this every day. So, so come back. Check it out again. Would be great to see you guys. Would love to have you. Now, Raynor, he doesn't scout for the proxy wrecks, but that's not necessarily a bad thing here. Because what is happening is this Overlord making its way down to the bottom left-hand side. It's going to get there pretty quick to see what's up. This is again going to be a Reaper-based proxy, hence the racks on the very top side of the map. So, Raynor, it's obviously nice if you see something like this, but he's going to see it pretty quick. The Overlord, confirmation of a little bit of an idea of what this is, but also... Just the fact that I think he doesn't kind of mind game himself is kind of nice, right? And this time he shouldn't, you know, pull a massive drone to try and fight this. Yes, it will become very micro-intensive. No, it's not going to be easy, but, you know, we're playing at the highest level here. As we do have ourselves, a second rack is about to finish up. The first Reaper is underway, so already getting that started. That's going to be seeing the, uh... Again, second gas setting up for the moment here. And waiting for, of course, the overload to start realizing a bit of, you know, oh my god, there's no CC. What's going on? 
Obviously, the bunker actually in the main base. Realm's going to see that. So if you can't deny that bunker, that's very frustrating. Because the bunker, if that comes up, consistently gives the Reaper somewhere to go to to heal back up. Um, which is obviously very nice. So Realm's actually going to start a Spine Crawler, probably just because of the bunker. Typically, a Spine Crawler against a Reaper attack like this is not great. Because what ends up happening is you just avoid the Spine Crawler, right? And it's 100 minerals you invest early that doesn't do much. 100 minerals to actually put you know put out damage against the bunker that can get rid of that it's a very different story as the first two queens gonna pop and that's gonna start making life a lot easier for rain or here zergling speed coming up but obviously way away from being done love the position of those lings looking to zone them away from the uh, reapers away from the bunker tries to get some damage on the scv is actually gonna come forward here queen would love to get that scv because otherwise it will just repair up that's a lot of lings lost but not much gained honestly Another re well, actually, a Reaper goes down, so that is a big pickoff. Spinecrawler will outrange the bunker right now, so that will start to get some damage done. The Reapers will play the in and out kind of game they like to play. That's where the Lings and the Queen's going to come forward again. They're going to get on top of this. The SCV targeted does go down. Bunker is probably should, maybe could have salvaged, but probably is obviously at that point was not going to. And so Reynold just begin to defend this. Remember, Clem is late on the command center, so Reynold can afford. To be building up lings against this, he can afford to take some damage. That CC only just now started, so that's on the way. As oh, a Reaper jumped in the main, probably rallied to the other Reapers and was like, "Oh, I'll derp around this way," and the Spine Crawler gets it. That's actually really big because that's actually like an extra Reaper going down. It really slows down a lot of Clem's momentum with this attack. It really takes some of the numbers out of this. And obviously, goes a uh, long way to help out too, as we see the Reapers. Now going to come back home, especially as Link Speed's going to start kicking. You want to make sure you're safe against some of the counterattacks that can happen. And as his factory is just about to get the reactor, he just doesn't quite have Hellions here yet, although he will be moving his way towards a starport. Of course, there's Overlord, nothing that shoots up right now, so Overlord takes advantage and will pull for a little jaunt around to the main base. Have a look to see what's going on. Sees the starport. I mean, not really much to see, just good to double check things, right? And. Again, no reason he doesn't, you know, no reason for him not to be there at the moment as Lings intercept the Reaper. So another Reaper going down. So continue to shut this down at the moment as the rest of the Lings coming back up to the top side. Again, the CC going to finish in the main and an orbital command from it. Nope, just going to load it up and take it down to the low ground to start this off. The rest of these Lings coming around too. So making their way down the left. And we're going to be seeing a fusion core from Clem setting up in the main base as well. Queen's gonna push the barracks away. And again, just there you go. a few Reapers, a few Hellions gather themselves up together. There's a Medivac Clem. I'll pop out of this starboard as these units still continue up to the top side. Spine crawler hanging around. Couple Queens continue to fire, and it looks like the barracks will go down very shortly, so barracks will be falling soon. Again, that fusion core finishing up here from Clem, so that will be completing as these Hellions. Make their way in towards the natural expansion, and well, the Ling's actually going to get a little bit of a pretty decent surround, and actually the Hellions force so far back. Now the Ling's going to fight these SCVs, so good damage being done. Oh, Banes! Kill off all the Reapers up here, so the Hellion drop to join those Reapers does nothing at all. And Reino is all over Clem here in this game. Number five, Proxy Moon once, shame on me. Proxy me twice, shame on you. Clem getting absolutely beaten up right now. We've seen the Hellions coming back around this top side. Drones, well, one of them already dropping down. Some other Lings setting up as well. Battlecruiser on the way from Clem, but he's down 25 workers. Which is obviously a pretty insane amount at this stage. So Reno in a very comfortable position here for this game number five. Obviously, he was down 0-3. Looking to fight his way back into this. As a Medivac gets sniped from these Queens as well. Is anything going to happen? In favor of Clem this game. Well, Clem doesn't want to find out. He's already... He, he, everything's gone wrong to the point where he just doesn't know what else might happen. You know, God forbid he tries to micro his marines. His desk might fall apart next. That's how badly this game ended up going. The Wardy... It's a really fun series. I love it when you get to see, like, a build come up again in a series. And it's like... It, it's not really an adjustment from Raynor as much as it's a... I mean, obviously it's an adjustment, but like he didn't see it, so it worked so differently. And I mean, he got far enough ahead that everything else just went so well for him. 
Bottom right hand side, our blue Terran is Clem from Team Liquid. As he takes on the red Zerg in the top left hand side from Clash, this is Raynor. A couple of shout outs as we do have the low ground rack. So maybe Clem gonna rip her up from over here. Uh, Lud Vegas came into the Twitch Prime for two months a few minutes ago. Thank you so much, Lud Vegas, and welcome back. And welcome Danfall91 to the Wardy family, Twitch Prime sub. Uh, just as I have a quick moment or so here, guys, if you do think about subscribing, replay packs are available. We already have a replay pack just recently on our Discord featuring Dark, Innovation, Stats, Zest, Raynor, Clem, all of these guys as well. Um, bunch of great games. We put pretty much every replay we cast in there, apart from a couple tournaments we're not allowed to. And obviously, if you subscribe, you're going to get access to more replays as well. So, uh, including this entire tournament, we'll go out in the replay pack too. So, if that sounds good to you, consider dropping us that Twitch Prime or subscribing in general. Otherwise, thank you very much. Can't stop the Tropicana. He says Tropicana Sparkling with a lot of fancy symbols. So. <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> for the $5. Hey, replays are also available on Patreon as well if you want to check that out. But that's enough for me shilling as we've got ourselves a couple of Reapers on the way through here. So couple Reapers starting us off and getting this going. Overlord of Raynor sat out in the center of the map. We're going to see another Overlord out over to the right-hand side also. We'll see. It's just going to be two Rax Reaper, but from his base. So a little bit less committed. Obviously, you're back at home. You've got a wall off against attacks early in the game as well. It is the spawn bottom right where you can then build the reactor and the tech lab here so you don't actually have to move the racks too much for that. Although this racks does currently block the reactor on the upper racks. So that's something to think about as we're going to be seeing the Reaper is coming in. Obviously, this will be joined by more Reapers now because Raynor scouted for proxies. He wasn't across the map to see the fact that this was multi-racks Reaper. So he does not have an overload in position to see what's timing at which this, you know, second racks was. He doesn't know if it's third racks. So Re uh, Reno is a little bit in the dark, and that is because of his initial overload scouting pattern. He does have a third hatchery down. He'll bring the queens down here as well. Again, a lot of this comes down to micro, and for the moment, Reno just has to hold this off as long as possible. Ling speed on the way. It's not going to be easy, though, as these few Reapers jump up in towards the main and going to be seeing a drone already going down. A few Zerglings falling in, and the Reaper going to drop a grenade as they leave out down to the low ground again. Another Reaper or so coming across the map from Clam, and... One more grenade as a couple of Zerglings get bobbed. The fight will continue as we see a few of these Zerglings being picked away at. I'm just going to be seeing Clem bring this back down to the bottom right-hand side. I'm just going to be seeing our factory coming up and a third CC behind all of this. So going into a good amount of eco to continue setting that up. As we calm down a little bit, I'll say thank you very much for the $5 donation from Smaller. It says, after leeching for too long, it's time to chip in. Thanks for your great content. Thank you so much, Smaller, for the five dollars. Give us some love in the chat, guys, for another five dollar donation. Thank you so much for chipping in. I appreciate it. Did you see those few lings of rain all coming out into the center? Third hatchery setting up. Queen in production. Some extra drones on the way. Ling speed has just finished as rain will make his way out and down to the bottom right hand side. A few marines here from Clan going to be picking its way or picking their way through this overlord, so that will drop. Overlord goes down, another Reaper grenade is going to be placed, and those Reapers are going to jump up to the high ground here, so looking good as we do have Stimpak is going to be finishing up. And again, Starboard going to be done in the main. Looking good across the board as we do see the engineering base from Clem dropping down in the back of the main base. And those up and rolling again, Stimpak still. Continues onwards here and just going to be seeing those few queens around the front. Again, a couple extra hellions still on the way out and what well, could be a pretty scary time in here, right? When you come across the map, you're going to have like Reapers and Hellions, Medivac and Stim. Like, there's actually a really scary time in here where you could really do some damage. Especially if Raynor doesn't take this attack seriously or if he just doesn't have preparation. And right now, I mean, Baneland Nest, okay, that was what I was going to say. He needs something like a Baneland Nest or the opportunity to go in towards like a Roach Roaring or so. He drops the Baneling Nest down here, so it gets that started up as Reapers and a couple of Hellions continuing up. Doing a good job of this starting out. I'm just going to see the Creep pushing on towards... Oh, the Reaper's pushing towards the Creep right now. When it drops down. Uh, Clam cannot afford to lose these units, though, if he wants to make something happen with Marines as well a little bit later. 
And the stim is now done. I honestly actually think if these marines were here, that rain will, uh, like, rain will be in a lot of trouble. Like, again, they already have stim, etc. They're all just clumped up on behind this depot. Uh, third CC going to move into position, so... Clam unloads a few units over to the right-hand side. They're going to come around. And we've seen the Zergling there gets picked off, and... Orbital will indeed go down, so... Orbital lands up, and... It's going to be seeing our lair from Raynor finishing in the main base. Still seeing Clem pressing forward, so a few creep tumors that could be cleaned out in amongst all of it, and a medevac boosting forwards. Scan drops, and already some creep tumors getting picked away at here, so... We've got a good amount of the creep spread here, Clem, initially. Continue pushing forwards, and we're going to see some more Zerglings running in. And this is kind of the attack I was expecting to see. This round is good, the medevac got sniped down, and so the healing is lacking. And it will be Raynor deflecting and defending. Bane speed now on the way up to help him out in the future. But of course, he is down on upgrade. So once 1-1 one, one kicks in, you've got another little timing here as Clem realistically. And okay, you're going to be up against Bane speed, etc. But you will trade very well against 0-0 zero, zero Zerglings for a while. So this is looking quite nice for Clem to obviously keep on pressuring the front and keeping this creep back. Which obviously eventually leads into a very aggressive push on 2-2 up this map because... Well, that's what Nightshade is all about. You know, you can push up in towards that fourth place location very easily. But Oling is going down already. That's painful. Now, we do see Bane Speed is still not done yet. As we're going to see a split away from some of these Widow Mines. Them does just leave and uh, lift and leave. It doesn't stick around. The rest of this joins up. We're going to be seeing ourselves uh, another hatchery in the natural expansion starting up as well. Creep Tumor's already going down. Overlord will be killed. The rest of the Zerglings trying to get in on top of this, and the Marines will load up. They're going to go boosting towards the main. At least they thought they were for a moment. In the end, they turn around. Queen's Interceptor Medivac picks off one of them as now the other Marine's going to be unloading up to the top side. Lings and Banes wanting to run through. Not the few Marines get picked back up, so... Still just seeing our 1-1 melee upgrades coming into play. Extra Marines in production. More Marines of... Clem up this left side. Hatchery already starts to take some damage. And again, a Marine gets picked off by a Bailing. A little bit of back and forth here. Clem trying to figure out where he wants to go. He's going to bring himself back over the left side. Marines continuing forwards, and these Zerglings all coming through. Nice Reaper Grenade to pop a few of those Lings away. The Banes show up there in the end as well. And Clem just comes back to cleaning out an Overlord or so. Cracks are back down onto reactors, and, and the unit production from Clem is just non-stop. Clem did not start 2-2 for a long time, though. So, not starting 2-2 for a very long time is absolutely very painful as well, right? And that's something else that you've got to be quite concerned about here overall, as Raynor. Because... Uh, sorry, as Clem. Because Raynor should have been concerned about the 2-2 timing, but I don't think now there's anything to be concerned about, right? You know, you know, 2 2 would have been amazing against 1 1, and now it's going to be 2 2 against 2 2, maybe even 2 1 against 2 2, because Raynor has got 2 2 started, and Clem has not started his armor upgrade yet. A couple of Banes getting through there, but Albats and Marines will defend nicely this continued push up the top side. Clem is taking a fourth base behind it, so it's not like he's just going all out, pushing in to win. And we'll get a good few tank shots there. Supply block from the losses of the depots on the right side, so slow down slightly from where he would like to be in reproducing. As you see this bio continuing to just sit outside the front of the base here. A few Marines around the left. This hatchery already taking a lot of damage. Again, the two upgrades coming in. Eight more Balins in production. And you can see that plus one vehicle weapon upgrade on the armory. Also coming through. More Marines up the left. And again, this hatchery taking some pretty big damage right now as Lings and Banes come rolling forwards. And they are going to connect in. Marines get shut down. Meanwhile, a big Ling run by is actually going to get through the natural, but Marines chase now. I'm not sure how much that will do. Now they turn back around and run into the main base. Might have been nice. Yeah, but we all need to kind of bring those Marines further back into the Terran zone main. Randall's going to lose this hatchery, but he gave up on it a long time ago. He's already got this hatch up here. He will set these drones up. Now, this base isn't great because actually if the Terran gets up here and has high ground, etc., it can be very difficult to deal with. It takes away the big counterattack potential around this right side into this base. So it can be a little bit funky in that regard. A bit more setbacks. The Terran does have to push further up the map. Thing is, the creep spread is here to kind of cover it, so it does have that, which you usually don't have if you take as your initial fourth base. 
Right now, Reynold charges forwards and picks off a siege tank. Clem turns to try and fight. Currently 2-1 against 1-1, but again, that should have been for such a longer period of time. As you're going to see, more of these lanes just getting cut off, though, and Reynold is in some real trouble because Clem just continues to find so many positions but he can just find like a few links here and a few links there. Lane's wanting to press forwards and he won't be able to reach this army just yet. The Link's still looking for a counter attack. This is maybe where Clem's counter, uh, where Reynolds counter does a lot. With the siege tank to hold the wall there. A few Bane's already rolling up into this main army. The tank is on that high ground we mentioned. And he does have to stem back, but watch what happens here. Okay, we'll actually hold this for, hold that thought because we're going to see Clem. A little late to lift up, and Reynold able to get some connections. But what happens is you pull back as Clem, and you get back to the front so quickly. And that's the amazing thing as well, because you're just consistently here as the Terran. You're just so close to getting back to your bases. So you can defend those run buys and then get back up and keep on pushing. And you can counterattack before the, you know, the Zerg player gets set back up onto Bane lanes and whatever else they need to get built, etc. Marine's still pushing through, and a few creep tumors will start to go down. So a little bit of creep being cleaned out. Bane's maybe wanting to come in from the top side. Plan maxed out against a 170 supply. Raynal with a drop. Stimming in towards the 12 o'clock base. He's already got position on the 4 o'clock and he's got Lings. Running at his natural, but he does have a tank to help defend. He's not paying attention though, so these Banes will do a lot as well. Up over here, we do see this drop going to get shut down. Main push will clean out the, well, I guess what became the 5th base. A couple of SCVs will go down too, though. 16, 18 workers already dropping from Clem. So Raynor starting to deal some good damage to get back into this now, maybe. Ling Bane going to run over the left-hand side. The small drop back in the main. It's actually going to force Raynor back a little bit. And Clem is still playing a dangerous game, sitting on the edge of the creep. Obviously hasn't reinforced in a while due to those run-bys. More of these Banes might, might be enough. I, it's really tough to say. You can come in from down this ramp and the right side at the same time, but... That's not really the surround. The surround is if you come in from like the bottom side or this side here when he's still there. I'm just relocating. And the thing is, he's had so much control of this map that he's been able to pick away all of his, um, all of these creep tumors. So a lot of creep tumors going down. You're going to see the rest of this lane being still trying to press through. More zerglings coming down the bottom side. CV's going down. Grass of this army from Clem. Still positioned. This time it's a really good shutdown of the run by. So again, doesn't have to slow down with his main attack. And he's got this hatchery low from the previous drop. And it's going to get real low. Of course, if he lose this now as Raynor, you're in a lot of trouble. He's going to come in from the left-hand side. Bottom and top. Let's see Clem go as he splits away. Reinforcements are halfway up the map from Clem. They're not here yet. So he will be maybe a little outmatched in numbers. But the splits off creep are beautiful. Barely any, uh, any, barely any Banelands remain. He gets the hatchery in the meantime. And now he's stimming up into the natural expansion as Raynor is running out of options to shut down these attacks. Oh my god. I mean, these, these Marines didn't dive as hard as I thought they might. There was no Banelands ready. He probably could have thought, uh, could have fought anything he wanted to. Plus three, plus three about to be here from Clem. So these fights are going to get only better for him from here on out. I mean, Adrenal Glands is coming in from Raynor, but what does Adrenal Glands matter when these Zerglings aren't even getting a chance to fight? Because they're just dying so quickly running into these fights. Now, a Viper on the way, trying to help against that Siege Tank. Another run by here from Raynor. Clem has the Siege Tanks to help push this back. More Marines out from the center. Adrenal Glands will finish in a moment or two. He's just going to be seeing another Siege Tank here setting up and... Adrenal Glands will continue to come on into this, so that'll be finishing momentarily. Lings and Banes continue to come in right now. More Lings into the counterattack. I mean, this is only Reynolds' only real hope, right? To do so much on these counters. I mean, he might get this entire mineral line, and even then, I'll doubt whether he'll have enough damage done because he's got this entire army of Clem. I haven't been able to zoom in for a while because these um, t armies are just so well spread out from Clem. Reynolds going to attack into them. It's going to be so tough. Here we go, Ling Bane. Starting to come through on this top side. A couple of blinding clouds on the bottom, but there's just no power to this army from Raynor anymore. There's just not the numbers. And Clem will close this out. 4-2 to two victory over Raynor in what turned out to be an epic, epic, epic best of seven final.